This video is sponsored by Capture One. So processing photos during or after a shoot can be really time consuming. I'm gonna show you how to speed up your workflow and make it more efficient using styles in Capture One. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Capture One, it's pretty much the industry standard when it comes to shooting, editing, and organizing your photos. I literally use it for all my shoots. And if you wanna check it out, I've put a link in the description. And I've also got a discount code for you guys, but more on that later. So what is a style? A style is basically a bunch of adjustments put together into a preset. Everything from exposure and saturation to contrast, highlight and shadow toning, black and white filtering, all these things can be put together into a style that you can apply quickly to images in the future. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Capture 122, show you how I edit an image, create a style and then apply that style to a batch of photos. So opening up Capture One here, I've got an image of myself. This is a self-portrait. Um, I shot it in the studio in front of a white wall and I wanted to give the effects of like an instant camera or say a Polaroid or film camera, that type of vibe. That's kind of what I'm going for here with this kind of direct flash look. So what I want to do is kind of create a style around that sort of look and that aesthetic. So I'm probably thinking quite a lot of contrast, slightly overexposed in the highlights, and then maybe adding some sort of green tones to the shadows and the mid-tones. Film usually has that greeny kind of look, so I'm probably gonna add some, add some of that into the shadows, and then maybe some grain as well. So I'm gonna start just by cropping this in, and then I usually start by going to the adjust panel, and I'm going to desaturate the image first of all. I tend to desaturate my colors just a little bit, I don't like them to be too bold and too bright. I like it to be slightly desaturated. So I'm probably gonna bring this down to around 15. And then I'm gonna go down to the curves. And I'm probably gonna use the Luma curve just because I don't wanna affect the colors of the image. I just wanna affect the brightness and the shadows. So I'm gonna push these highlights up and bring these shadows down. I'm just gonna do like a pretty much standard S curve. And this is what I usually do for most of my images to add more contrast and just make it pop a little bit more. So I'm gonna bring those top highlights down just a bit, but push these up a bit more and then lift the shadows right at the end, which is gonna give me a little bit of a fade to the blacks. I don't want it to be completely black. I prefer it to be a slightly grayed out, um, which is also gonna to add to that film look as well. Of course, I could play around with this forever, but this is like my typical kind of what I would do. I probably wouldn't push it this far usually, but because I'm going for more of a stylistic look for this with that Polaroid film instant camera effect, I've pushed the contrast quite far. So I'm probably gonna go down to clarity and reduce the clarity a little bit, just because if I'm going for that film look, I want it to be a little bit softer because those cameras are not completely sharp. They're often a little bit soft. So I'm gonna just bring the clarity down so that the image isn't too sharp. And what I'm gonna go into now is play around with the color. So I'm gonna go into color. And as you can see, I've got my color editor, which is where I can sort of play around with HSL, so hue, saturation, and lightness. And I can choose any color sort of within the rainbow and adjust those. Um, but what I think I'm mainly gonna do with this is in the color balance panel. And this is where I can play around with shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you can see I've got the three-way menu here where I can adjust these and sort of play around with them. So if I adjust the midtones, you can see my skin changes color. But what I prefer to do is go into each one individually and adjust it in there. So I'm gonna go into the shadows and you can see I've got this color wheel and I'm gonna add a slight green tone to the shadow. So I'm moving it to green and then this, I'm just gonna push this up and this is going to affect the intensity of that green. So if I push it all the way, you can see it's pretty much all green. It's giving Shrek. If I pull it down, it's a more of a subtle look and it's just really affecting the blacks. So if I do before and after, uh, you can see before and after of the, all the adjustments so far. But if I just show the before and after of what this is doing, you can see here that it's very subtle at the moment. I'm probably going to push it a little bit more but you can see already it's just giving that sort of 
slightly green, slightly retro feel to the image. I've done the shadows and I'm probably gonna push a little bit of green also in the mid-tones. Now this is obviously gonna affect my skin tone a little bit, but I'm not too bothered about that because usually these cameras do affect the skin tones. So it looks realistic to be honest. So I'm gonna push that up a little bit. Obviously I don't want it too green where I'm looking like sickly. About here should be fine. So, so far you can see the adjustments in terms of colour that I've made. The image has kind of lost its kind of redness and it's gone a lot more green. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some red into the highlights because I think that's just going to give it a nice tone and help it have that filmic kind of look. So I'm going to push the red in the highlights very slightly. And you can sort of see the effect that has there. And of course you could take this further, go a bit more extreme. I feel like it could be a little bit more. So this is what we're working with so far. You can see it's a huge difference from where we started already. I can actually do like a split screen before and after and you can see the effect that that has had. So that's just using the curves to add some contrast and then using the color balance to sort of add some toning to the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So from here, we wanna save this as a style. So I'm gonna to go to style and I'm gonna click on these three dots here and I'm gonna to go to save custom style and I'm going to choose the adjustments that I want. So I probably don't want the crop because if I'm applying it to different images, I might crop differently. So I don't really need to keep the crop. I think everything else is fine. So I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call it um, instant camera and I'm just gonna save that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna apply that style that I just made to a different image. So I've got this other photo here and it's part of the same set, so I want it to have the same feel. So what I'm gonna do in the adjustment panel here, in this layers tab, I'm gonna go to this plus, click the drop down, and click new field adjustment layer. And I'm going to right click on this and go to apply adjustments from, custom styles, and then go down to instant camera. So straight away, it's applied all those settings from my last photo onto this one. I feel like the effect is a little bit too much on here, but what you can do and what's good about applying the style to a layer is that you can play with the opacity of the layer. So here in this top bit where it says layers, opacity, I can drag this down and it's gonna affect the intensity of that layer and that style. So I can push it to 100 or I can bring it down to maybe 60% and I can really sort of play around with how much I want it on there. So there we go, I made my adjustments, I saved it as a style and then I can apply that style to multiple images. So let's say I've got my style on these two images now but I take some more photos and I'm gonna import them into Capture One. What I can do to save time is apply the style directly from import. I'm gonna to go to File, Import Images and I'm gonna choose and find my images wherever they are on my computer. So I'm gonna to go to pictures and I'm gonna to go to uh, my self portraits and I'm gonna select pretty much all of these. And I'm gonna to go to review for import. All these images are ready for import now. I can go down to adjustments, styles, custom styles, and then I can apply that instant camera effect. It's not gonna show up here, but once I press pick all and then import all, it's gonna bring all of those images into Capture One and automatically apply the style. So you can see here straight away, all of these images have the style that I just created. And that's just gonna save me so much time so I don't have to go individually and add styles to all of them. Straight away, they've got the styles on them and I can start making adjustments to them individually. This is especially great for if you shoot large batches of photos. So if you're doing e-commerce photography, wedding photography, or also on a fashion shoot where you're shooting in similar sort of conditions, you can apply that style to all your photos and then just make subtle tweaks where you have to. So that's how you make custom styles, but Capture One also has some built-in styles that you can use to apply to your images as well. So I can hover over these and it will preview what the styles will look like. So I've got black and white contrast, black and white neutral, fashion, um, you know, landscape, still life. There's different styles for certain things. 
and you can play around with these and there are also some available on the Capture One website for purchase that you can check out as well. So that's one way to use styles in Capture One but there's also another way which is called style brushes and I'm going to show you how that works. So I've loaded up these images and what, all I've done so far is cropped them. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to apply a style that I already have. So I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to go down to custom styles, basic contrast. This is just like my basic sort of curves, adjustments and desaturation that I apply to pretty much every image that I bring into Capture One. So before and after, it's just giving it a bit more contrast. It makes it pop out the screen a little bit more. So what I want to do now is use what's called a style brush, which allows me to make localized adjustments to parts of an image. So I can sort of paint on and just edit that select part of the image. So what I want to do here is really zoom into her eyes. And the eyes look great. They've got catch lights in them, but I like to make my eyes pop a little bit more. So I'm going to go down to style brushes here and I'm going to go to built-in style brushes, enhancements, and I'm going to go to iris enhance. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to brush on and it's going to enhance her eye area. So I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller. And as soon as I start brushing, you can see where it's showing up red. It's showing me which parts of the image I'm actually affecting. And as soon as I start brushing on, you can see that it's making adjustments to that area and making that eye pop a whole lot more. So if you can see here, it's created a new layer, Iris Enhance. I can click this on and off and you can see the effect that this has. So this looks a little bit too much for me. It looks a little bit scary. So I'm going to bring the opacity down of that effect just a bit. I could probably bring it down even more, to be honest, because her eyes are already popping quite a lot in this. So I bring it down to about 30%. So I do a lot of fashion and beauty work. So typically I'm working with people and I like to use star brushes like this to maybe brighten someone's eyes or whiten someone's teeth. But you could also use it for dodging and burning. So highlighting parts and darkening parts of the image or maybe desaturating parts of the image. I'm gonna show you how I can use a style brush to edit skin tones. So I've already done the eyes here. So I'm gonna create a new empty adjustment layer and I'm gonna call this one skin tones and I'm going to get my brush tool make it a little bit larger and I'm just going to quickly go over these skin tones to select them and then from there we're going to make some adjustments and that's pretty much all the skin tones selected and I can press M and M is going to show me where my mask is so what I've basically done is created a mask so from here I want to make some adjustments to this skin tone color so I'm going to go into my color panel and I'm going to go down to color editor. So I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to go down to this color picker here and I'm going to zoom in on the skin and I'm going to select an area of the skin which I think is like a good middle ground for the skin. So I'm going to select this point here on the forehead and as you can see it's come up with this color wheel and it showed me the point that I've selected and it's also selected some of the colors around that to give me like a smoother transition between colors and you can see the color I've got selected here and if I press View selected color range. It's going to isolate that color. So you can see the colors that it has selected. Now, obviously, because her skin is brown, it's selecting oranges, reds and colors around that. So it has picked up some areas on the jacket, but I don't have to worry about this too much because I'm using a style brush. So it's only going to affect the areas which I've painted onto. So what I'm going to do now is I want to desaturate the skin tone slightly and make them a little bit deeper. Now this is going to make the clothes stand out a bit more, it's going to make it pop and it's going to give it that sort of high fashion look that I'm going for. So as you can see I've got my colour selected which is this brown colour of her skin which is the selection I made on the forehead and I'm going to go to saturation and I'm going to just bring this saturation down slightly and I'm also going to come down to lightness and I'm going to bring the lightness down slightly and you can see the effect that that is having on the image. And if I click on and off of this, you can see the changes that has made. So it's made her skin a bit deeper and it's made it a little less saturated. So you can see the effect that that's had on the image and it's sort of given it this desaturated look. Now, what I can do is right click on this, save adjustments as style brush. So I'm gonna save this as is and I'm just gonna call this desaturated 
skin. Now, if I come over to one of my other images from earlier, I wanna apply that same style brush to this image. So I'm gonna to go to my adjust panel. I'm gonna to go to style brushes and I'm gonna to go to custom style brushes and go for desaturated skin, which is the one I just made. And then from here, once I start painting this on, you can see that it's given it that same desaturated skin effect from my last image. So I can quickly make adjustments to all my images and paint on areas that I want to give a certain style or maybe desaturate slightly or brighten slightly. I can quickly save all those adjustments as style brushes and paint them on to my images. So that is how I use styles and star brushes in Capture One. When I'm shooting, I usually have hundreds of images that I have to process. So being able to apply styles across loads of images really helps me to save time and time is money. Be sure to check out Capture One at the link in the description. I have a discount code for you guys, which gives you 20% off an annual subscription with the code EN20. So make sure you use that code. It's super limited. Only the first 100 people can get that discount. So make sure you check out the link in the description and use EN20. If you want to see more of my work, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Ian Hippo. And if you want to see more photography content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new uploads. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.